Thanks for staying with us. Last week we brought you a snippet of this interview and we promised to bring you the full version. Former President Khalima Mutlante says the African Union should have acted timelessly to resolve the Tigray conflict. The Tigray People's Liberation Front and the Ethiopian Army have been engaged in conflict that has led to thousands of deaths and many more to flee their homes. Our international news editor Sophie Mukwena spoke exclusively with the former president about the conflict and the recently held Gambian elections. The elections in the Gambia uh, were conducted in a, a peaceful uh, environment. Uh, there, there was hardly any incident. They, they, it's so peaceful that they hold their election rally at night. Uh, you know, from uh, 7 p.m. until midnight. And, and that goes without any incidents. I observed two such major, major rallies here. Mm. That's how peaceful the, the, the Gambia is. Looking at the Electoral Commission in that country, can you say with conviction that uh, uh, the electoral body was ready to administer these elections? Yes, indeed, uh, we met with the Electoral uh, Commission as uh, the practice and convention. And, and, and of course, they were ready. They took us through their preparations. Uh, and we observed the, uh, the opening of the polling stations and observed uh, the number of them throughout the uh, the, the, the day of the elections, and, and we also observed the uh, closing uh, of the voting at the polling station and, and the uh, uh, counting of, of the votes uh, at, at each polling station. In terms of your report, what is contained in your report? Well, our report uh, covers uh, the observations of uh, the, uh, the team because the team fans out across the length and breadth of the country. Uh, we had uh, observers from 30 uh, 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 countries and, and, and of course the Commonwealth had its own team. The, uh, AISA also has its own team, ECOWAS also has its own team. Uh, and, and our reports were virtually uh, the same. We made uh, basically the same observations here. There's always a criticism that uh, the observer mission, uh, they don't come early enough to ensure that uh, the climate is conducive for campaigning and also post-elections to ensure that uh, uh, what you have experienced during voting, because normally voting is relatively peaceful you are not able to continue to ensure that uh, uh, after counting, all is well. No, not in this case. In the Gambia, as I said, we were there. Our long-term team was in the Gambia from October. Uh, and, and we were there uh, uh, until the 7th. Uh, and and the, remember, the, the election results were declared on, on the on the fifth. We know that at some point in time, Gambia had challenges. Do you think uh, the country has moved in terms of where it was a few years ago, where we saw the former president, Yaya Jame, leaving the country? Have they kind of find one another? We know that they engage in a process of reconciliation. Does the environment on the ground speaks to that? Yes, the environment on the ground speaks to that. Remember, they also had a, a, a TRRC uh, process. Uh, and, and the report uh, of that commission has already been uh, uh, handed over to, to the president. So 
uh, in there that's really dealing with uh, all the excesses and atrocities that were uh, committed during the uh, period of Yaya Jameh's dictatorship. So, so remember that Yaya Jameh lost the elections in 2016, and, and this election was the first uh, post uh, Yaya Jameh uh, 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 period. There are people who are saying, uh, former president, that uh, the process and the systems that are being used, particularly on voting day, when uh, voters are participating, is still primitive. What is your observation? They are not using ballot papers like we do. What is your observation and what is your recommendation? Is it not time for Gambia to move and perhaps uh, adapt and use uh, similar uh, ways and means that are being used on the continent generally, talking about the ballot paper? No, in fact, our recommendation is uh, to the contrary, that that system should be retained uh, with uh, modification here and there and improvements. Uh, because uh, it's a simple, straightforward uh, uh, pro process which uh, makes it easy for even voters who can't read and write to cast their vote. And, and it's a, I, must, I must tell you, it's a, it's a beautiful innovation, actually. The use of uh, marbles. Yes, they call them tokens. Let, let me give you a historical context. Uh, following, remember, the Gambia and Sierra Leone were colonies of uh, Great Britain. And, and following uh, Ghana's independence, they also started uh, demanding their independence. And, and the colonial uh, masters then said, no, what, we can't grant you. Uh, independent because uh, you are illiterate, uh, you know, your people are not educated. And they then uh, devised this simple system whereby, uh, 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 you know, registered voters are uh, compiled in a, uh, a mm -hmm. voter's role and, and each polling station, polling center rather, handles uh, anything between 300 and 800. Uh, and, and, and so, the, depending on the number of candidates, uh, each candidate in each polling station uh, has a dedicated bucket, which they call a drum. Uh, and, and the bucket is painted in the colors of that candidate's party. And the the photo of that candidate is pasted on that packet. And so in this uh, 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 recent election, they had six candidates. And so in each polling station, there would be uh, six buckets, uh, one, each one dedicated to uh, a candidate. And, and as I said, with the colors of that candidate's party, and, and the face of the candidate faced on the bucket. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the process of, so, so when, when a voter presents, uh, uh, you know, himself or herself at the polling station, the party agents are there, they all have the voter's role, and uh, each one, including the IEC staff and the presiding officer, they, they then uh, find the name on the uh, ballot paper and, and uh, tick that name, and, and the voter is then given the token uh, and, and disappears behind, uh, because the, 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 the buckets, which are in our case, the, uh, you know, ballot boxes are kept behind closed doors 
and, and so the voter walks in there, it takes less than 10 seconds, and, and you, everyone hears the uh, ringing of the bell when the, the, uh, the token or the marble falls into the bucket. And, and they know it's confirmation that the person has voted. Yeah. Let's move to Ethiopia. Former president, last year, President Ramaphosa appointed you as the envoy uh, during the start of the tension in, in Tigray. Yes, of course, this is a long-standing uh, problem, but you were involved last year. Were you able to visit the area, and what did you observe perhaps uh, what you can share with us in terms of what is happening in that region? Well, as you know, there's a history to this. I mean, uh, uh, the, the Trigayans were uh, in charge of the Defense Force, the Federal Army, the, uh, they were in charge in the economy, and, and they were also in charge uh, in the federation itself in terms of uh, polit political uh, leadership uh, from the time of uh, prime minister Meles Zenawi, uh, followed by uh, Haile Miriam de Saleh, and and then uh, until uh, the current prime minister uh, took over as part of uh, the, the the federation the front and of course, you know, once he uh, introduced the process of uh, uh, reducing the influence of the Tigray, uh, he, he then uh, uh, postponed elections. And, and the reason given for the postponement of elections was uh, uh, COVID. And, and of course, the Tigrayans were, were unhappy about the postponement and, and decided to go ahead and hold the election at the anniversary date. And, and uh, so the, the, the Federation felt that uh, they, they were rebelling. And, and they, in anticipation of uh, the conflict, then attacked the military base, which was uh, based in, in Makele in, in, in Tigray. Uh, it was the largest military base because it is close to the border with uh, Eritrea. As you know, uh, the Ethiopia had been at war with Eritrea until the current prime minister uh, mm -hmm. was able to uh, broker uh, peace. So, so when we were there, uh, it was right at the beginning, and uh, I was there with President Chisano and uh, President Helen Johnson to sell it, where we had an uh, uh, engagement with the president, uh, which was very fruitful, and then uh, we then met the prime minister. And uh, the problem uh, started when uh, the Prime Minister characterized the conflict as a simple matter of law enforcement uh, because his view was that they, they, they had identified uh, a, a, a few criminals leading the TPLF and, and that they were going to bring them to book within a, a week or so. When we were there, it was uh, about a week ahead of the AU uh, silencing the gun summit. And, and President Chisano uh, was at pain to persuade the Prime Minister to allow us to identify interlocutors and, and, and to uh, help with. Uh, uh, mediation, but he was adamant that uh, you know if the, uh, a problem of law enforcement in any country, it never really uh, uh, you know gets to be elevated to uh, mediation by, uh, by uh, outsiders. 
So, uh, and, and he was super confident that this is something they would bring under control within minimum time. But here we are, it's more than a year now, and the war has escalated. And uh, uh, I know President Obama uh, uh, is now trying to, uh, to, to, to mediate uh, a, a, a solution to that conflict. But uh, when we were there, uh, the Prime Minister was adamant that uh, he, 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 they did not need anyone uh, mediation here. Former President, do you think this problem can still be resolved? Well, you know, you have to understand the history of uh, Ethiopia uh, and that each state is actually ethnically based. Uh, and, and so uh, when, when, you know, progressive leaders such as Prime Minister Meles were there, that in charge, they were quite alive to uh, the importance of building uh, the Ethiopia as a, as a federal state. Uh, and, and that, you know, precisely because of the ethnic uh, element to it. When uh, uh, it unravels, uh, it creates serious, serious difficulties. I mean, uh, uh, we've uh, now uh, been made aware that in Addis Ababa, for instance, Tigrayans who were there, you know, had been there for years, uh, were, were basically uh, hounded out and detained. Uh, so it... it, it, it uh, it, it, it ossifies, it hardens, uh, you know, ethnic uh, uh, differences. Do you think the AU is doing enough as a continental body to assist Ethiopia uh, to get out of this uh, uh, conflict? Well, I, I, I really think the AU has been... Uh, uh, pussyfooting uh, rather than, uh, you know, taking a, a firm stand because, precisely because uh, uh, Ethiopia, you know, Addis Ababa is the seat of the AU uh, itself. And, and now, uh, with the mobilization and the uh, conflict, uh, most of the AU uh, full-time personnel have had to move to uh, Kenya, uh, and, and I, 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 I think the AU has not been firm enough from the wet go. Uh, it has been uh, uh, approaching this matter half heartedly because you know the the the, the silencing of the Dan uh, uh, program. Uh, was an important program for the AU, but uh, here we are. Uh, the, the the conflict is being allowed to escalate, and of course, what's going to happen is that uh, the, the the superpowers will will get involved uh, because it also affects the region, uh, as it were, particularly. Uh, uh, you know, the Sudan, uh, Somalia, and so on.